Hello and welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And today we're going to ramble about... Lego Dimensions! Knight Rider! Now... Never-ending story. No. Timeless. Possibly. Not this time around. Serenity. Firefly. Not this time around. Soda Stream, that's what we're going to talk about. Yes. We are going to talk about Soda Stream and Pepsi. Yes, Pepsi. Because Pepsi I actually like Coke better. But that's Wild Cherry Pepsi. It, not, I, it's okay. I'm, I'm okay with Wild Cherry Pepsi. Ah. And Pepsi Clear. Just because it's kind of weird. But, anyway. Um, what, the whole thing about... You might be thinking, oh, What? Soda Stream Pepsi? What in the world's going on there? Well, apparently... Pepsi uh, wants to buy out SodaStream. They want to buy out their stock. And there's been a huge um, jump in SodaStream stock because of it. Man, I, I, I was interested in SodaStream stock uh, like a year ago or so when it was like really low. But it wasn't doing so good. And I wasn't sure if it was going to turn itself around. Well, shucks. <laughs> Guess it did. <laughs> it would have been a good buy if I had done that. Uh, but, you know, well, there, there's other opportunities. Just a matter of time. But, um, I don't know. Is it going to be a good or a bad thing? Um... There's a lot of things about SodaStream I like, and I have a I have a huge variety here of, of SodaStream. Uh, a lot of this stuff is not even made anymore. Like uh, now, I think they still do the Welch's grape uh, soda, but like the this is barely anything left in here. This Country Time Lemonade. It's got kind of a weird color to it. It may not be good anymore. Um, Happy Hour Cosmopolitan, they don't do anymore. Goodbye. Uh, this Cranberry Grape, Ocean Spray. Um, I've got a Apple Peach. I mean, I was getting a, a bunch of these. These here are relatively, I mean, these. this design is, was a relatively new one. I haven't even opened this one. It's like cranberry. Uh, and then we got the Fountain Mist. That's like the, the uh, Mountain Dew. This is diet, and it was freaking nasty. Um, then they have like Kool-Aid type. This is cherry. Um, and actually, if you took like this and mixed it in with, the, with like regular cola, it was like making your own cherry Coke. It was actually pretty good. But, um... But yeah, um, Soda Stream, it's a thing. Um, and not too bad of a thing. Um, I like it. Um, some will say that uh, it, it costs 
Oh, Hot Wheels. Yeah. Ghostbusters. Anyway, <laughs> that's the classic one, not not the uh, 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 fe feminized one. But um, I like it because you can just, you know, make your soda whenever you want. Um, you don't have to go run to the store to go, you know, um, buy yourself uh, a soda. I, I just did it for the purposes of this video, but... Uh, but speaking of which, do you prefer the uh, the plastic bottles or the cans or glass bottles? Maybe I should make a video on that. I don't know. Um, I think I prefer the plastic bottles the least. They never seem to stay cold. Cans at least stay cold. Glass bottles are the best. Because um, this still has like a tin taste to it. But glass bottles, pff, always the best. Can't beat glass bottles. Especially Mexican Cokes. Come on, nothing is better than a Mexican Coke. <laughs> Bar done. Mexican Coke's the way to go. Uh... But anyway, uh, there's an article that has uh, a little bit more detail about what's going on with uh, SodaStream and Pepsi. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and get a little bit more detail about what's going on. Okay, so here we are. Uh, Pepsi hopes to add some fizz to its beverage lineup with SodaStream purchase. This is from NBC News. It's the razor and blade system. Um not quite sure what that is. This plays very, very well to the way Millennials and Generation Z are thinking and buying today. See, they got glass bottles there. See, they, they even think glass bottles are a good thing. Uh, all right. So Pepsi announced on Monday. Uh, that was yesterday. Well, this video is going up on Wednesday, so two days ago. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> it would... Uh, so basically, the August the 20th, all right? How about that? It was it was going to buy SodaStream. Not that they did, that it would buy SodaStream um, for $3.2 billion. Uh, it reflects changing consumer taste when it comes to how Americans quench their thirst. Analysts say the move is part of a broader shift Pepsi is taking towards healthier, more environmentally friendly offerings as the popularity of traditional sweet and carbonated beverages declines in favor of water-based drinks. Where's my Pepsi? <laughs> right. I do like the sparkling water. Um... I just want to drink my cherry Pepsi before it gets warm. Uh, let's see. Acquisition strengthens Pepsi PepsiCo's position in the water category, improves its positioning in healthy, healthier refreshment, enhances the company efforts in relatively undeveloped in-home channel. Although the price PepsiCo will pay represents a 32% premium above the Tel Aviv company's current share price, analysts say the investment holds the potential for a big payoff. I remember reading um, a while back that Pepsi was going to be trying to make its own, um, oh, its own thing, its own little in-home thing, and I don't know where that went. I guess it didn't go anywhere uh, because apparently they're buying SodaStream. Anyway, I think it's very interesting. It certainly fits very well with Pepsi's strategy. <sighs> That's what happens when you drink Pepsi. Anyway, it certainly fits very well with Pepsi's strategy about going towards better for you beverages and foods. Didn't they buy a bunch of snack foods? Thought they did. Sparkling water category is growing pretty tremendously. Consumers are looking for ways. They look for more lighter beverages. Blah, 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 blah. SodaStream is about becoming larger in a segment of the industry that should see sustained about above industry growth for over blah, 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 blah. okay so you can read this article if you want there'll be a link in the descript, descript, description 
All right, and then uh, here's another one. PepsiCo returns to Soda's roots with its SodaStream deal. I'm going to need to... <laughs> if I can click the right window here. Move this over. Woo! Look how neat that is. All right. So, let's see. 3.2 billion purchase of SodaStream is a thing of the past. What does this mean? Uh-oh. This is the day after. Most consumers have now now drink soda out of bottles or cans, but the vending machine staple got its start as a mixable medical remedy by buying a soda stream. PepsiCo will return partially to the mixable syrup model on which its sugary business empire is built. Soda was introduced to a mass market in the late 1700s by Joanne Jake. Jacob Schwepp, a German scientist to develop a processing for carbonating water. Really? Anyone know that? It was that late? It was that long ago? Yep. Cheers! <laughs> I didn't know that. Man, 1700s. Wow. German scientists, too. Woohoo! Germany! I have Germany ancestry. German ancestry. Germany ancestry. It's my with me. Yeah. Uh, there is a belief that volcanic mineral carbonated water was healthy, said Darcy O'Neill, author of Fix the Pumps, a book that details the history of the soda fountain. Then people realized they could add lemon and some sugar to it, and that was the first soda. For 100 years or so, soda was primarily thought of as a medicine. Yeah, that's right, because... Um, man, for a long time, uh, like you would go to the pharmacy, and you would go pick up some medicine, and you'd get a, get a soda. Um... I primarily remember that, like, with the Andy Griffith, uh, Andy Griffith show. Let me see if I can pull up a little Andy Griffith show. Maybe buying a soda or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll find something. Andy Griffith. Probably not going to find anything about buying a soda. One punch... <laughs> One punch o OP. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to find anything. Maybe they have it under drugstore. No. Barney's first car. Well, that's got to be scary. <laughs> Aunt B's medicine, man. I don't think it's going to be in that either. Opie's allowance. You know who you know who Opie is, right? Ron Howard. You know, big time director. He directed Solo, <laughs> a Star Wars story. Love it or hate it. Yeah, there he is, right here, as a kid. That's Opie. It's Ron Howard. Or back then he was Ronnie Howard. And then he was R Richie Cunningham and Happy Days. Um, but yeah. The pharmacy. That's where you went. To, uh, they had candy. They had the candy sticks. And uh, the, the, the you get get soda there. It was... It was interesting, you know. It just inter now that was before my time, um, but still, that that was how it was. Um, but that's not the right article. <laughs> anyway, uh, most consumers now drink soda out of bottles or cans, but the vending machine staple got its start as a mixable medical remedy by buying. Oh, all right. I already read all this. 
Okay, so it's thought of as a medicine. Okay, so you remember Dr. Pepper? So that was actually made by a pharmacist. Coca-Cola was a syrup that was supposed to settle your stomach. Yeah, there was something else that was in Coca-Cola too. Once the flavor became... That, that's the reason why they call it Coke, right? Once the flavor became popular, the company licensed its syrup to bottlers in early 1900s. There's a reason why Dr. Pepper is called Dr. Pepper. A move that competitors like Pepsi quickly followed. Syrups and soda fountains remained popular, and during Prohibition, soda recipe books became desirable as Americans thirsted for creative flavor combinations. But in the 1950s, the vending machines started to take over. They could saturate the environment with those. Syrup is still available to restaurants and cafeterias with soda fountains. But most people today get their soda from cans and bottles, and while SodaStream has made DIY, that's better than uh, DUI, <laughs> do-it-yourself soda is a little more popular with modern consumers. Uh, big beverage companies have had limited, to limited success with the direct-to-consumer syrup approach this century. It has been limited success. Um, Coca-Cola tried to work its way into consumers' kitchens four years ago when it bought a large stake in Keurig Green Mountain, which makes countertop drink dispensers. It ended that effort two years later because of poor sales. You know, I looked for this. I know that Keurig does those, like, coffee and, and uh, uh, like, hot chocolate things, but I knew that Coca-Cola had like a soda thing with them I could never find it I could never find it so well well yeah I guess you had poor sales I could never find your stupid machine oh well now though people may not just be looking for healthy alternatives but also more variety and control well I don't know put your product out there maybe I'd find it the hipster culture has done a really good job of bringing that back there's this idea that cooking and doing your own thing is better than just getting prepackaged stuff. Now we have all the resources to research how to make it. Yeah, Pinterest. Pinterest is the thing. I love Pinterest. If you don't have a Pinterest account, you need to you need to do so because there's so so many great things on Pinterest. Think of Pinterest as a bulletin board. Right? A bulletin board or um man what what do they call those things um you know like uh oh, oh man what it calls it is escape escapes me but oh it's like a scrapbook or something you know like you tear art you know articles out of like magazines and stuff like that and you kind of put them together in a folder or, or something it's like oh i like this article i like this article you know and you put them together that's pinterest Okay, so if you were wondering what Pinterest is, um, it's it's like you've got like a board and you got like pins and tacks. Um, it's kind of a rough way of putting it, but you're grabbing things that people are sharing and you've got your own little board uh, in a way. And you're taking these things and you're kind of pinning it to your boards. That way you can always go back to it. That's Pinterest. And if you don't have a Pinterest account, what are you doing? <laughs> because there's so much stuff on Pinterest. I mean, think of what interests you. That's the interest part of Pin. And you'll find it. You'll find it on there. I mean, you got to be interested in something, right? I mean, it's it's a good resource. It's a great resource. I mean, I, out of all the social media sites out there, I think it is the most useful one out there. Personally, in my personal opinion, I think it's the most useful one out there. Anyway, uh, soda bottle is in no danger of disappearing, but Pepsi is gambling that the market is ready for some new or old alternatives. Blah. Anyway, uh, there is a, another article on here. Um, about the Israeli government that's going to take taxes or something in there. 
Um, Israeli company that makes the carbonated beverage devices for home use uh, for $3.2 billion was coupled with news that the company would continue to be based in Israel for at least the next 15 years. SodaStream is also expected to open another manufacturing plant in Israel, which should boost the number of employees for the company in Israel from the 2,000 who work for it now. Well, that's, that's good for Israel. The deal is not expected to result, however... And a major tax windfall for the Israeli Treasury. Reacting to the news of the sale, the Prime Minister welcomed the company's commitment to remain in Israel. That's good. I mean, it, you know, I mean, the companies in Israel, I mean, the uh, acquisition, is it an acquisition? I don't know. I mean, but the, man, I'm going to kick your butt. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi's uh, buyout of SodaStream shouldn't take jobs away from Israelis. That just wouldn't be fair. So I'm glad that, you know, the factories are stay staying there for them and creating more jobs. I mean, that's that's good. Um, but, yeah, giant transaction would enrich the country's co uh, coffers, treasure. Yeah, that's that's good. In actuality, however, the sale is not expected to generate huge tax revenues for the Israeli government. The real boost will be in the form of new plant and employment. So, yeah, what this is saying is that they're not going to be getting a whole lot of new taxes, but it is going to increase uh, uh, employment. I'm not sure how that works. You, 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 you increase employment, but you don't get a whole lot more taxes. I'm sure some mathematician have figured that out, which I'm not. Uh, which each less have a 10% stake. This is going to a whole bunch of math, which doesn't really interest me. But I will, <laughs> I will put the uh, article in the uh, description link. So you can read this yourself if you want to. But anyway, um, that's it. Uh, that's, that's, all, that's all we're going to go over as far as SodaStream and Pepsi. Um, oh, yeah, let's take a look at SodaStream stock. Boom. All right. So here we go. So here was the stock. And then with the announcement of Pepsi buying it, check this out. That's insane. Look at that. It nearly, it almost doubled. It was down here at 86 and now it's up here at 143. Look at that. That's crazy. That that is nuts. Let's go to the two. See, look at here. Back in 2016, look how low it was. Imagine if you bought a hundred shares of this. A hundred shares. Back here in 2016. It was at 25. What 27? Let's say let's say you got it at 27. Uh, twenty-seven dollars a share, and you got a hundred of them. All right, so you pay two thousand seven hundred dollars, right? Now it's worth a hundred, and let's say you sold it at a hundred and forty-three dollars a share. So it's now worth fourteen thousand. Jeez. What did we pay? Man. Man, that sucks. <laughs> would have made over... T would have made over $12,000. Ah! I wouldn't have bought 100 shares back then, though. That's the thing. I would have... I would have... I would have bought, like, maybe 5 or 10. But, oh, my goodness. Can you... Ma oh, man. If you had bought 100 shares, you... Ah, it's one of those opportunities that, oh, no, 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 that's so horrible. Oh, man, if I only knew. <laughs> Wow. Life sucks sometimes. All right. Anyway, this is going to make me depressed. 
So, <laughs> that's it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hey, are you going to invest in SodaStream stock? Um, maybe it'll continue to go up. Maybe now that it's uh, gone up, uh, like this, maybe there's going to be a lot of people that say, Ooh, look at how much money I got. Uh, maybe I'll sell. So maybe this will uh, come down quite a bit. Um, because if I had 100 shares, I probably would sell it. I definitely, I would sell it. I wouldn't hold on to it. I'd sell that sucker. So, who knows? Maybe other people are thinking the same thing. I, I wouldn't hold on to it. Are you kidding me? But, I don't know. That's just me. So, maybe it'll drop back down. And then you can, like, pick it up. But, hey. I don't know. What you think? That looks like that might be a buying opportunity. Keep your eye on it. <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, I will see you on the next Rambling video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Click like if you did. That lets me know what to focus on. Subscribing shows your support and lets you know when something new is uploaded to the channel. It also makes me feel happy. That's a good thing, right? As a special bonus, I have a link to the very first video I uploaded to this channel, which is about SodaStream. It's unlisted because, quite frankly, it sucks. It was recorded on a crappy phone, but it wound up with nearly 5,300 views before I unlisted it. It's also the most downvoted video I have, which is also why I unlisted it. But I've got a link here just for nostalgia purposes, as well as in the description. I don't know. Think I should make it public again, or is it better out of sight, out of mind? Hmm. I've also got a couple of other videos about the stock market, so you might find those interesting too. Thanks for watching, and we'll ramble again soon.